Okay, so if you talk about immunity, honey, what do you? What's the first thing that pops out in your mind? The immune system. Mm -hmm. So very and, good. And immunosurveillance. Okay, so the immunity it protects us. So you have your specific, non-specific. If it's non-specific, it pertains to your skin, to the secretion of your eyes. So if there's an offending organism, probably some bacteria that will go inside your body. The first line of defense is your non-specific areas, which are your skin, your mucous membrane. Let me talk about the immunosurveillance. Uh, not later. Later, Wait, we're gonna talk about that. I got a great example. Okay. Okay. You tell. Okay. Mm. Basically, what immunosurveillance is, is it's your body's uh, innate ability uh, to identify uh, bad cells in the body, and it basically will, will take them out with natural killer cells. Mm -hmm. um, what it's like, uh, I want you to imagine, it's like uh, police out on patrol. And as these cops are out on patrol, they're looking for bad guys. Mm -hmm. And when they see these bad guys, they take them out. Mm -hmm. Okay, And these bad guys in your body would be aberrant cells, cancer cells, things like that, bacteria and such. Um, what happens though, oftentimes with immunosurveillance, is as we start adopting more of a really unhealthy lifestyle, mm -hmm. we start developing a lot more inflammation from the mm -hmm. foods we eat, from our lifestyle habits. You know, it could be the, the perfumes we're putting on, the, the makeup that's getting put on, mm -hmm. the lotions that gets, that's getting put on, the highly inflammatory foods. At that point, the immune system is very, very active, mm -hmm. trying to put it basically, put out these fires of inflammation and what that means is the immune system is out doing things that instead of out there looking for bad guys to take care of them instead of doing that mm -hmm. the immune system is out shooting dice mm -hmm. they're out playing cards they're out hanging out at mcdonald's they're out at the cockfights mm -hmm. um, doing things that basically are not benefiting us from a uh, mm -hmm. immunologic perspective they're just basically putting out the fires mm -hmm. of, uh, of inflammation mm -hmm. so uh, as basically as Dr. Farah has clearly demonstrated over the years, if we can put out the fires of inflammation, if we can uh, limit these persistent lifestyle and organic pollutants like what's in our house, mm -hmm. what we put on our skin, mm -hmm. uh, dietary uh, pollutants, uh, you know the things that we're eating, then the immune system can really uh, get an opportunity to go back to work and mm -hmm. do what it does best because. Mm -hmm. The immune system was basically made to really do specifically one really good thing. Mm -hmm. That's to kill things. To kill, yeah. To kill things that our body does not need. The, uh, to kill offending organisms kill offending and organisms. anything that is foreign inside mm -hmm. our body. That's actually uh, the specific, it's a more specific, <clears throat> This is these are your lymphocytes, so if you have your CBC, and you take your CBC of the lymphocytes, the neutrophils, the eosinophils. So these are just cells. We call them polymorphonuclear cells. And they are there for certain reason. Okay, for example, there's a bacterial infection. And you do your CBC, diba? You check your CBC and then you look at the neutrophils and they're high. It says that your blood is telling you that there's a bacterial infection. Now, if there's a viral infection, your lymphocytes will be higher. Okay, if there's a parasitic infection, your eosinophils are getting higher. For all of you who are sick, diba? Sometimes you're telling me, Doctor, can you read this CBC? And then you would tell me, you would look at it, so you will know, uh, just by you, but just by learning and watching this video, you will already know that, uh, okay, ah, this is high, so most probably I have some bacterial infection. But we're gonna be talking about immunity, the third the third stage, that's what they're calling, or the third um, uh, phase of immunity, which is your passive and your active immunity. So this is more about uh, vaccination, about having an infection, an innate infection, uh, antibody introducing into our system. So you have two types of immunity. You have your active immunity and you have your passive immunity. So if it's an active immunity, okay, since we're going to be talking about childhood illnesses right now, if it's an active immunity, an antigen is being introduced in our body, okay, either through vaccination or second is either through contact. So nagkasakit ka, okay, so those are the two types of active immunity. You have your natural in which you got sick. For example, you had measles or you had some form of uh, 
uh, hepatitis. Okay, so nagkaroon ka. That's your active immunity. Okay, that's your natural. And then you have your artificial immunity, which is through vaccination. And we're gonna be discussing. I'm not gonna go thoroughly through through vaccination because. Uh, as all of you know, I did not vaccinate my children. So, and there's a reason why I did not vaccinate them. So, again, we're gonna go to active mm -hmm. immunity. So, this is lifelong. So, once you get this type of infection, yeah, then infection, you would have uh, some sort of, according to uh, some literature, it's almost lifelong because there's still uh, an incidence or there's still cases that have had reinfection. So it doesn't really confer 100% immunity. Although in some literature, they say it's 100%. But some people, they had measles and then they will have measles again. Okay, And it's because of uh, the, the, the nativity or the, the, the nature of the, the virus. Some virus, they have undergo some form of mutation. Okay, and that's very normal for them, for a virus to change its genetic structure. Okay, so that's your active. So again, it's an antigen, it's lifelong, there's a memory for that. And you have two phases. You have your first, your primary response, in which when you get the infection, you will not develop immunity first. The second time that that virus comes in contact with your body after the primary response, then more or less your body can fight it already. So that's your active. So we're going to go to passive. Passive immunity. The passive immunity talks about antibody. So, there's no antigen here. The person has not been exposed to any uh, antigenic stimulation. This is all about no antibody. Uh, yes, there's no illness. Careful not to talk too medical, mom. Yes, so there's no illness. For example, passive, you have your natural again and your um, artificial. Of course, artificial, it's vaccination. So, you're going to be giving antibody like tetanus toxoid. So you have anti sera they call it. And some people, um, they're allergic to the anti sera so they would form a severe case, which is serum sickness. So again, so we're going to go to the natural. The natural, it's the introduction of an antibody, either by maternal antibodies, uh, maternal antibodies transfer going to the infant, okay? Or through breastfeeding. That's why it's important to do breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I breastfed my children for almost... I think my youngest, it's three and a half years. <laughs> I breastfed the one I was, yeah. I was like 24. You were 24. <laughs> okay, so that's very important. Okay, again, for the passive, it's an antibody. And the response is rapid. Okay, in contrast with the active. The active, the response is, you have a primary response and secondary response. But with the, with, the, with the passive, it's immediate. Okay, you introduce antibody, it's immediate. However, the effects would only last for a few days. Okay, so that's how the active and the passive uh, immunity is. And I hope that um, you understood. Okay, that's the most important. So we're gonna be talking about detoxification, right? What is the organ for detoxification? So it's actually a lot of organs. So the, the main organs, if you call about the internal, the main organ is the liver, okay? So whatever we eat, whatever... Then we will die, okay? So that's why it's very important to take care of the liver. So for the liver, if you want to detoxify, you can use garlic, milk thistle, dandelion, and also megadose vitamin C. Now, there's another major detoxification organ, our skin. Okay? So, our sweat glands, okay? They open, they release this. They release salt, they release toxins as well via our sweat glands. That's why it's very important that you sweat. Okay? For those people who do not like to sweat, I'm so sorry, you really need to sweat. So you can remove all of those environmental pollutants inside your skin as well. The ones that you are putting in your skin, diba? Mga, tayo mga Filipina, as Filipina, they want, we want to put a lot of chemicals in our skin. It's very important to detoxify our body via the skin. So it's good if you're gonna go to sauna, diba? Sauna. So, or you're just gonna perspire. You go outside, go out. 
you know, uh, do something productive outside and then you will sweat. So that's one of the good things that you can detoxify as well. So very good. Yes, okay. So another is, hello po Doc Farah. Ano po ang mabisang pang detox? Gal galing vaccines kay baby, 8 months po. Salamat, yes. Christine Janet. For detoxification, you can use horse tail tea. Yeah, so horse tail tea because some of the vaccines they have aluminum. One of the one of the components of them they have aluminum, and then the silica from horse tail it will combine with the aluminum, and then you can uh, safely uh, pee them. Yeah, and so one of the uh, best way you can remove uh, the harmful chemicals inside your body. Pwede din po yung vitamin C. Yeah, that's one of the best thing that you can do as well.